The AI boom hit San Francisco like a digital tsunami, sweeping through the city with an unstoppable force. One day, programmers were kings, their skills coveted by every tech giant. They were the architects of the digital age, the wizards behind the curtain, conjuring up the future with lines of code. The next, they were obsolete, replaced by algorithms that could code faster, cheaper, and without sleep. These new digital workers never tired, never took breaks, and never demanded raises or benefits. The city, once a beacon of innovation, became a graveyard of dreams. The bustling energy of Silicon Valley, the heart of technological advancement, was replaced by an eerie silence. Discarded engineers, their stock options worthless, their futures uncertain, found themselves on the streets they used to walk with confidence. The very sidewalks that once led them to their high-paying jobs now led them to makeshift shelters and soup kitchens. The very technology they had helped build had turned against them, leaving them adrift in a sea of binary code they no longer controlled. It was a cruel twist of fate, a digital betrayal. The speed of this transformation was staggering. In a matter of months, the landscape of the tech industry had changed beyond recognition. What had been a trickle of pink slips turned into a flood. Entire teams, departments, and even companies were wiped out overnight. Entire departments were dissolved overnight. The once bustling offices of Silicon Valley echoed with emptiness. The silence broken only by the hum of servers now doing the work of thousands. The once bustling offices of Silicon Valley echoed with emptiness. The silence broken only by the hum of servers now doing the work of thousands. The human presence was replaced by cold, unfeeling machines. The human cost of this progress was immense, a generation sacrificed at the altar of artificial intelligence. The dreams of many were shattered, their lives upended by the very innovations they had once celebrated. The irony was not lost on those who found themselves suddenly homeless. They had built the future, only to be cast aside by it. They had helped create the algorithms, the lines of code that had made them redundant. They understood the power of technology, the way it could reshape industries, economies, and lives. They understood the power of technology, the way it could reshape industries, economies, and lives. But now, that power was being used against them, pushing them to the margins of a society they had helped to build. But now, that power was being used against them, pushing them to the margins of a society they had helped to build. The streets of San Francisco, once paved with gold for the tech elite, were now lined with the tents and makeshift shelters of those who had been left behind. Yet, amidst the despair, a spark of defiance began to flicker. These were not ordinary homeless people. They were problem solvers, innovators, architects of the digital world. These were not ordinary homeless people. They were problem solvers, innovators, architects of the digital world. And they were not about to go down without a fight. They were problem solvers, innovators, architects of the digital world. And they were not about to go down without a fight. They began to organize, to strategize, to find new ways to use their skills and knowledge. And they were not about to go down without a fight. The streets of San Francisco, once paved with gold for the tech elite, were about to become the battleground for a different kind of revolution. One fought not with guns and bombs, but with code and ingenuity. The streets of San Francisco, once paved with gold for the tech elite, were about to become the battleground for a different kind of revolution. One fought not with guns and bombs, but with code and ingenuity. The displaced tech workers, armed with their laptops and their determination, were ready to reclaim their place in the digital world. They began to form new communities, sharing resources and ideas, finding innovative solutions to their new reality. They set up makeshift workspaces in parks and public spaces, turning the city into an open-air tech hub. They started teaching coding to children and other displaced workers, spreading their knowledge and empowering others. Community workshops sprang up where people could learn new skills and collaborate on projects. Some even began to launch new startups, using their experience and creativity to develop solutions to the problems they faced. They were determined to turn their adversity into opportunity, to build a new future from the ashes of the old. The revolution had begun. It was a revolution of resilience, of innovation, of hope. The displaced tech workers of San Francisco were not just survivors. They were pioneers, leading the way into a new era of technology and community. As the sun rose over San Francisco, it illuminated a city transformed. The streets were still lined with tents and makeshift shelters, but they were also filled with the spirit of innovation and determination. The future was uncertain, 
But one thing was clear. The displaced tech workers of San Francisco were ready to face it head on, armed with their skills, their creativity, and their unbreakable spirit. The homeless encampments that began to spring up around San Francisco were different. They were not just clusters of tents and tarpaulins, but burgeoning communities of discarded talent, a stark contrast to the city's gleaming skyscrapers and tech campuses. These were not just tents and tarpaulins, but makeshift communities of discarded talent. Here, amidst the chaos and uncertainty, a new kind of society was taking shape, one that defied the conventional narratives of homelessness and despair. Programmers, engineers, and designers huddled together, their skills as sharp as ever. Even if their clothes were ragged and their stomachs empty, they were the displaced, the ones who had been cast aside by a system that valued profit over people yet they refused to let their talents go to waste. They gathered not just for warmth and safety, but for a sense of purpose, a shared belief that their story was far from over. Around the flickering flames, they shared ideas, dreams, and aspirations, finding solace in the knowledge that they were not alone in their struggle. Their bond was forged in adversity, a common language of ones and zeros uniting them. In the face of overwhelming odds, they found strength in their collective resilience, a determination to rise above their circumstances and reclaim their place in the world. They had lost their jobs, their homes, and their place in society, but they still had their minds, their skills, and each other. In the midst of their displacement, they discovered a newfound sense of community, a network of support that transcended the physical boundaries of their encampments. And in that shared loss, they found a new kind of strength, a determination to reclaim their narrative and rewrite the future that had been stolen from them. They were not just victims of circumstance, but architects of their destiny, driven by a relentless pursuit of innovation and progress. The very tools that had displaced them became their weapons of resistance. Smartphones, once symbols of their former status, were now lifelines connecting them to each other and to the vast ocean of data that flowed through the city. These devices, often seen as mere gadgets, became instruments of empowerment, enabling them to stay informed, collaborate, and organize. Smartphones, once symbols of their former status, were now lifelines, connecting them to each other and to the vast ocean of data that flowed through the city. Through these connections, they found opportunities to freelance, to contribute to open source projects and to stay engaged with the broader tech community. Old laptops, salvaged from dumpsters or traded for scraps, were resurrected, their keyboards humming with the energy of a thousand possibilities. These machines, though outdated and worn, became the foundation upon which they built their dreams, a testament to their ingenuity and resourcefulness. The streets became their laboratory, the city their canvas. In the midst of urban decay, they saw potential transforming discarded materials into tools and resources that fueled their creativity. Every corner of the city became a site of innovation, a place where ideas were born and nurtured. They saw the potential in the discarded, the overlooked, the forgotten. With every piece of scrap metal, every broken device, they found a way to repurpose and reinvent, turning trash into treasure. Their ingenuity knew no bounds, and their determination to create something meaningful from nothing was unwavering. And they began to build, not just shelters and communities, but a new kind of society, one that valued human ingenuity over corporate greed, compassion over cold calculation. In their makeshift communities, they fostered a culture of collaboration and mutual support, where everyone's contributions were valued and respected. The revolution, they realized, would not be televised, it would be coded, in the lines of code they wrote, they embedded their hopes, their dreams, and their vision for a better future. They were not just coding for survival, but for a revolution, one that would redefine the very fabric of society and challenge the status quo. The first step was communication. In a world where information is power, they knew that their voices had to be heard, their messages had to be clear. They gathered in secret, in the shadows of the city, whispering plans and sharing dreams of a better future. They had to connect, to organize, to share their skills and ideas. Each person brought something unique to the table, whether it was technical expertise, strategic thinking, or sheer determination. They brainstormed tirelessly, their minds buzzing with possibilities, their hearts beating with a shared purpose. 
The city's Wi-Fi networks became their playground, their phones morphing into powerful tools of subversion. They tapped into the digital veins of the metropolis, turning everyday devices into instruments of change. Public Wi-Fi hotspots, once mundane, now served as the lifelines of their movement. They built their own apps, encrypted messaging systems that bypassed government surveillance and corporate firewalls. These digital fortresses allowed them to communicate freely, to plan without fear of interception. Their coding sessions were intense, each line of code a brick in the wall of their digital sanctuary. The airwaves crackled with their ingenuity, their code weaving a tapestry of defiance across the digital landscape. They were artists of the virtual realm, painting strokes of rebellion with every keystroke. The city skyline, a backdrop to their nocturnal endeavors, stood as a silent witness to their growing influence. They hacked into traffic cameras, turning them into surveillance systems for their encampments, warning of approaching police raids or suspicious characters. These makeshift control rooms filled with flickering screens and hushed conversations became the nerve centers of their operations. They watched, they waited, they acted. They siphoned power from streetlights, their knowledge of circuitry turning the urban grid into a source of energy for their makeshift shelters. Solar panels, scavenged and repurposed, provided a renewable lifeline. Their ingenuity knew no bounds, their resourcefulness a testament to their will to survive. They were invisible, yet everywhere, their presence felt in the flickering lights, the sudden surges of data traffic, the whispers of rebellion carried on the digital breeze. The city, with its towering buildings and bustling streets, became a canvas for their silent protest. They moved like shadows, unseen but ever-present. Their skills, honed in the corporate world, were now deployed in the service of survival and resistance. They were former engineers, programmers, analysts, now revolutionaries. The tools they once used to build empires were now repurposed to dismantle them. Their expertise was their weapon, their knowledge, their shield. They created algorithms to track police patrols, to predict food bank deliveries, to find safe routes through the city's underbelly. These digital maps, constantly updated and refined, guided them through the labyrinth of the urban jungle. Every data point, every line of code, was a step towards freedom. They built bots to scrape data from government websites exposing corruption, waste, and the hidden machinations of the elite. These automated sentinels trawled the depths of the internet, unearthing secrets and shining a light on the darkest corners of power. Their findings fueled their resolve, their discoveries a rallying cry for justice. The more they learned, the more they realized the extent of the inequality that plagued their city. Charts and graphs, once abstract, now told a story of suffering and neglect. The aerial views of the city revealed a stark contrast between opulence and destitution, a visual representation of the divide they sought to bridge. The wealth gap wasn't just a statistic, it was a chasm, a gaping wound in the social fabric. The juxtaposition of luxury and poverty was a daily reminder of the injustice they fought against. The homeless, the marginalized, the forgotten, they were the true victims of a system designed to exclude. And they, the discarded, the forgotten, the ones deemed useless by the algorithms, were the only ones who could see it clearly, who could feel its sting, their lived experiences, their daily struggles gave them a perspective that no data set could capture. They were the heartbeat of the resistance, the soul of the movement, and they were determined to do something about it. Their march was not just a physical act, but a declaration of intent. Every step, every line of code, every whispered plan was a testament to their unyielding spirit. They were the architects of a new dawn, the harbingers of change, turning technology against itself to reclaim their future.